Here you have a river with river current at the speed of two meters per second, and a boat that can travel at three meters per second in still water. Which means this three meters per second is the speed of the boat relative to the river water. This time, the boat is going to cross this、uh, 600 meter wide river. If the boat aims straight across like this, how long does it take for the boat to reach the other side? We're just going to say that the boat travels at a constant velocity the entire time, ignoring the acceleration at the beginning. And the deceleration at the end. So this boat gets、uh, two velocities, a three meters per second straight across by the boat itself, and another velocity from the river current to the right. And I'm adding these two velocities together, tail to tip. So the total velocity start here and there is、uh, this one, which means that this is the boat's velocity relative to the shore. So the boat aims straight across, but travels along this direction and reaches a point right there. So the boat aims like this. But travels along this slanted line and get to the other side. Now we want to find the time it takes to cross the river. We can find the distance traveled by the boat divided by the speed of the boat relative to the shore. But we don't have to do that because what we know is that the river is 600 meters wide. So if we treat this motion as a two-dimensional motion, you have an x-direction motion and a y-direction motion. This 600 meters will be the delta y. Since the boat is traveling at a constant velocity in both the x-direction and the y-direction, we can just use delta y equals to velocity times time. So. The time is the delta y divided by the velocity's y component. We use this because we already know delta y. So if we just find the y velocity, then we can conveniently find the time. Delta y is 600 meters. The v y is the velocity's y component. The river velocity. Doesn't have any y component. All the y component comes from the three. So it takes two hundred seconds to get to the other side. Now I can also ask you find out how far downstream the boat ends. So how far downstream does the boat end? If I want to find out. This will be the straight cross position, and、uh, that's how far downstream the boat ends. That means we're looking for delta x. Since it's also constant velocity motion in the x direction, I can say this is the velocity's x component times time. The velocity's x component is two, and the time is two hundred seconds. So the boat ends up four hundred meters. Downstream. Of course, I don't have to use this method because we have similar triangles. These two triangles are similar. That means 600 to 3 would equal to delta x to 2, which will give you exactly the same answer. In fact, this distance, slanted distance traveled, divided by the slanted velocity. Is also the 600 divided by three. So if you had found the slanted distance and the slanted velocity, then you'll be able to find exactly the same thing because 600 divided by three is the same as 400 divided by two. It's the same as the slanted distance divided by the slanted velocity. All of those will give you 200 seconds. So if the boat aims straight across, it ends up not straight across but downstream.、It、has to go straight across. In what direction should the boat aim? 
and in that case, how long would it take the boat to reach the other side? The boat will have to aim at an upstream angle. So the boat can give itself a velocity that is slanted 3, while the river current carries it downstream at the velocity of 2, and I'm adding the two velocities tail to tip. Now if the angle is just right, this point will end straight across like that. So the total velocity, start here and there, the total velocity is uh, this vector right here. So the boat aims at an angle, but actually travels straight across to there. And we want to find the angle at which you have to aim and uh, the time to the other side. So let's see. For the angle, for this right triangle, you can see that the 2 is the opposite side and the 3 is the hypotenuse. If you have opposite side and hypotenuse, that means you have sine theta, that is 2 thirds. That means the angle is inverse sine 2 thirds and that gives you about 41.8 degrees. So this is the angle at which the boat has to aim and that is 41.8 uh, degrees upstream angle. Because uh, if the boat aims straight across, it's not an up, no, there's no upstream angle and then the boat has to tilt by that angle pointing in the upstream direction. That's why it's 41.8 upstream angle. And now let's find the time to the other side. We still know the delta y. So if we want to find the time to the other side, we can do delta y divided by the velocity's y component. Now this velocity is entirely in the y direction. So this whole thing is the y component. There's no x component of the total velocity. Okay, so delta y is 600. What is this component? That's a right triangle. So you can use Pythagorean theorem because this is a squared plus b squared equals to c squared. So this one is the square root of c squared minus b squared. So it'll be 3 squared minus 2 squared, which gives you square root of 5. So you can do 600 divided by the square root of 5. This is actually okay to keep as the answer, but if you do the calculation, you're going to find the 268 seconds. Now let's compare these two. This boat travels a shorter distance, but takes longer to cross. Why do you think that's the case? One way to look at this is that this boat spends part of its uh, velocity to fight the current. It only has a smaller component in the y direction. But this boat uses all its velocity to try to get to the other side. So this one takes less time to get to the other side. Another way to look at this is that the uh, the delta y is the fixed number. 600 meters doesn't change. It doesn't matter which way you go. So the same delta y, if you want to minimize the time, you would want to man maximize the velocity's y component. The river current doesn't have any velocity in the y direction. So the most y component you can get is the 3 meters per second if you use the whole 3 meters per second pointing in the y direction. If you slant it, you're going to have a smaller y component. That's why this one is the quickest way to get to the other side. But of course, if you don't want to end up downstream, then you'll have to point your boat at different angles, depending on where you want to get to.